Uh, I've been the IFPAC president since November the 1st, 2019, succeeding Mauricio Aguera, who I would like to congratulate for his determination in promoting IFPAC. It's an exciting time for IFPAC and for me. I am the first European president of IFPAC, and my hopes is that being present in Europe that it will promote IFPAC and IFPAC sizing standards around the European communities. I will continue the mission of IFPAC as it's been stated for over 30 years, focusing on being the recognized leaders of uh, IFPAC sizing standards. IFPAC has three sizing standards, function point, snap and we will soon release the first simple function points. My personal stamp as a uh, president is very focused on energizing our group of members and volunteers to ensure knowledge sharing and ideas with the focus of successfully delivering software projects. And as a president, I have for my two years of presidency, three main goals, be relevant and count for management and users, improve communication, learning and sharing, and increase membership and volunteers. The uh, function point analysis can do a not only a budgetary but also a pricing evaluation of a project and, and the strength is to look at it from the functional need and not necessarily the mandates and then translate that into uh, financial evaluation. The function point analysis methods provide a factual evaluation of the functional sites. It also has its strengths by being independent of the person who is measuring, so it's consistent in the measuring method. You can say that the method is evaluating the what and not necessarily the how much or what is missing. Other usages uh, of the result of a function point analysis is to use it for things like performance, quality, competitiveness evaluation, so used in benchmarking and performance indicators. It's uh, more than just a what in my mind. The what is one of the purposes of the method, but the method itself is, is wiser in my mind. It can uh, evaluate the requirements, identify what is missing, find the possible defects, it can remove possible ambiguity and if the ambiguity cannot be removed it's possible to pose some assumptions that is very easy to track and, uh, and measure for final quotation. So it's an excellent independent peer review of requirements and very effective peer review. It, it allows things like uh, monitoring and progress of projects. One can measure the progress of what has been delivered compared to what is planned. One can use the function point analysis to specify what has been tested successfully compared to the defects identified. If we take it from a contractual perspective, it allows contract using price per function points. So in other words, a contract where you have a win-win situation, you pay for what you get from a functional perspective. It's definitely to get some support from a trustworthy third party. The third party role would be to verify and validate the accuracy of the size measure, uh, sometimes even support in, in kind of like creating the uh, function point analysis, but also the function point analysis needs to be associated with some defined guidelines and documentation of interpretation to make sure that it's consistent. My advice is always to use a certified function point specialist. Being a certified function point specialist means that you have already proven that you have the knowledge and the expertise within the function point analysis. And I want to add that a lot of the certified function point analysts that I know is uh, is actually experts not only in the size measure but also in estimating and benchmarking and price per function points.
The function pattern analysis rules are the rules. They cannot be interpreted differently. But when moving from requirements to the function point analysis, there can be a different interpretation of the requirements. And when you have that case, you need to document the decision that you make on how to count it in order to be consistent and accurate. We need to bear in mind that the function point analysis is not, it's not only a question of a number, it is a method, it is a process. And in order to follow the process, follow the method, you need experienced function point analysts. Resources like uh, Naomi Andre, who is a certified function point specialist with many years of experience, is having the experience in interpreting the rules regardless of how the requirement is written. And for that reason, resources like her is extremely valuable for a project when you want to go down the route of especially pricing based on function points. I worked for many years, more than 10 years now on function points. I'm a certified function point specialist and I work with different type of companies. Uh, with various organizations who were both national and international. I have audited function point uh, measurements and what I love the most in my job is to carry out conflicts between the suppliers and their clients. During this kind of missions, I have been able to issue recommendations in complete impartiality to the benefit uh, of both the suppliers and the, uh, the clients. So this has enabled the function point method to be ratified. Usually it is to make uh, the client gain trust in the suppliers and inversely. Thanks to the IFPEG methodology, we can achieve a win-win deal. Inputs, most of the time, are the cause of the misunderstandings and IFPUG methodology helps to highlight uh, the weaknesses of functional requirements, for example. This is the second step of the methodology. In fact, we have different solutions for that. For example, we can use assessment with uh, estimating uh, tools. Uh, such as Kokomo. We also can use non-functional size measure with IFPUG value adjustment factor or we can use also software non-functional assessment project which is called a SNAP methodology. So we have different approach but what is really important and to keep in mind is that when you make an adjustment with the if fa uh, factor, for example, we can have a ratio at more or less uh, 35%, so the impact on the final uh, price could be very important. Ideally, the function point analyst should work closely with anybody defining or uh, interpreting requirements, such as requirements gathering teams or designers or testers. As Christine Green uh, just stated, function point analysts like me would bring value towards not only a size measure, but input as peer review, requirement traceability, uh, measure of quality and performance for the project. For optimal implementation, the idea would be to have teams that are geographically close together, ideally in the same time zone, at plus or minus three or four hours. The optimal size for the team would be three uh, to five people with easy access to experts, with an effective approach in order to facilitate decision making. Another solution would be to detach the teams on the same site so that they can work together. I 
believe in the Empowering methodology because it uh, evaluates the requirement quite rigorously. And one of the reasons for challenge or failed software projects is the lack of uh, scope control and scope clarity. Things like uh, breaking down the requirements, uh, not only from the perspective of delivery, but also in a quantifiable way. And to, to use it for evaluation of price estimates, cost, so that the estimates and price settings that we're doing is not just based on gut feelings. For me, this methodology is the best solution to have a good balance in the exchanges between suppliers and their clients, as it gives transparency by using a common unit for both parties.